This is so awesome because it's, uh, it's been such a long journey as an entrepreneur. When I started, it really wasn't the cool thing to do. I grew up in a, uh, I, so I grew up in a small town in New Jersey um, and I owe it all to my mother and father, my family. That has been like my big support system because they taught me at a young age that I pretty much had to become a hustler. I had to grow up fast. I had to um, you know, understand you know, certain values in life. And uh, those morals that my parents taught me at a young age has really built me to be the successful entrepreneur I am today. Um, my mother and uh, my grandparents had immigrated here um, on both sides, my father's side from Italy, my mother's side from Venezuela. And uh, my mother grew up in a you know, small one bedroom shack with six siblings. And I'll never forget growing up, she told me that that little studio apartment caught on fire and she lost everything. And she actually had to drop out of high school just to get a job to help provide for my grandparents. And she was like, always told me that if I was able to do that with the shirt off my back and now build my, build my family, you and my two sisters, Monica and Cynthia, then you can do anything. And, and, and even still like growing up in that small town in New Jersey, um, I saw my mother work seven days a week at a supermarket, you know, so that motivated me so much to want to be able to give back to my mother. And then my father, you know, really instilled leadership at a really young age. Um, same thing, extremely hard worker, um, very educated. He worked for Prudential and he put a lot of pressure on me. You know, growing up, it was like, he constantly told me, you have to be a leader. You know, he wanted me to go to Princeton University. That was a, very important to him. Um, getting honor roll. You know, being a great student was, was so important, and my, my family consistently pushed me. Um, but growing up, I really wasn't the smartest kid. I didn't really relate to books as, as much as I did real life experience. I was very outgoing, um, very charismatic, where I, would, I wanted to learn from just different experiences and people. I ended up making friends with like my, everybody in my neighborhood, all the older kids. and. You know, um, I was an artist, I loved art. I, all I asked my parents was to put me into art school. Um, so, you know, fast forward a little bit, you know, I'm getting ready to graduate high school. And, you know, I also was a athlete, very competitive, but I never really was a big kid. So I, you know, it was most of the time second string or third string. And because of that, I learned no matter what, you know, being a part of a team, it doesn't matter what position you really play. As long as you show up to practice, and you're about motivating your team and you're there um, to help them win, it's, it's really, you know, that's what really counts. And my team always respected me for that, even though I would get beat up or in the beginning made fun of, you know, sometimes third string as a wide receiver. Um, no matter what, eventually the team respected me because I always showed up, rain or shine. And I took that same mentality, so to, once I graduated high school, um, I you know, wanted to go to college, make my family proud. They told me that that was really the path to success for me. Um, and you know, quickly I saw the internet, how the internet was really evolving and changing things. And you know, I was really interested in the internet. I was also very interested in investing in the stock market. And quickly, after my first semester, I kind of really felt like, and just so you know, I didn't make it into Princeton University. I was planning on hopefully being able to transfer. Um, but first semester, I just felt, you know, it, school was, in my opinion, not for me. I felt it was a really big business. Um, they were telling me what classes to take in order to get to the major that I wanted to take to learn about entrepreneurship, to learn about business, to learn about finance. And I was accumulating debt. So I said to myself, I need to find a mentor. I need to learn how to self-educate myself. And if there's ever a time to take a risk, um, it's, it's now. So that was a big day. That was a big day for me when I uh, when I ended up deciding that I was going to drop out my first semester and take a shot um, at being an entrepreneur. And that was, you know, the the very beginning of my entrepreneur journey. And can you tell us about a moment when you describe the background of your parents not having much and start instilling in you that there was a lot of hustle? Can you tell us about a moment when you were running Elite Daily where you remembered those lessons and they got you through a really tough moment? If throughout my whole entrepreneur career, um, all the way up into Elite Daily, Elite Daily, I mean, it took me a long time to even get to Elite Daily. So I, those 
those values, those morals, that mindset that my parents instilled in me at a young age helps me to today, um, no matter what. Because you're always gonna have, you know, as an entrepreneur, it's like, you know, when they say like riding a, you know, a motorcycle, you're, you know, eventually you, you're gonna, you know, you're gonna make, you're gonna, it's inevitable. You're gonna make mistakes. You're gonna, you know, you're gonna have to learn how to pivot and you're gonna learn how to, how to bounce back. You gotta have like resilience. You gotta be able to, um, you know, have the real confidence that you can, that you can persevere through, through those, you know, different obstacles. And with Elite Daily, we got, you know, in the very beginning, we had to experiment a lot. We made a ton of mistakes, you know, and we got a, a ton of no's from people. You know, people were telling us, you know, it was hard to raise capital, you know, the, getting advertisers to believe in us, you know, they, they didn't believe in our content, they didn't believe that we were a real, pub, you know, a real publication um, with Why notoriety. Was that? Why was that? Why wouldn't they believe in the publication? Um, I think, one, because of our age, I, you know, I think we were, you know, I had mentored this, my, my partner and CEO, David Arabov, who was 19 when we started it, and, you know, we were we were a young, you know, we were a young team one. But you know, for me, it's never been about it's never been about age. Um, I think the biggest thing was the way that we were kind of disrupting content at the time. You know, we looked at the industry and saw a uh, an opportunity where we looked at every publication out there that was writing for millennials, and we we felt that there was a void in the market of the type of authenticity in the content that was written for us by us and hitting you know every single vertical at the time and you know we wanted to open this up to you know to all millennials that have a story we felt we felt everybody has a story everybody should be able to have a voice um and we very much allowed we really didn't have too many rules you know we kind of allowed people to kind of say it right the way it was and how they felt and uh this kind of caused a lot of backlash on us initially in the, in the very in the very beginning and can you tell us about a moment, you said you made a lot of mistakes in the beginning. What about the moments where you were sure it wouldn't work? You know, I think that that was more my role um, with my co-founders is, there was, I, I don't think there was ever a moment that I ever said this is not gonna work. I always was the one pushing the team, um, pushing my co-founders, you know, that we have to believe in ourselves and we have to believe in what we stand for and you know just keep pushing forward and keep believing and if we believe and we are seeing the results ourselves i mean a lot of people didn't believe our analytics in the very beginning either they felt you know a lot of it was or all of it was like bought traffic and bots and things like that we knew what we were boosting and what we weren't boosting and we knew what was truly organic and we had to learn the game we had to learn how much comscore played a role and certain you know how to be able to kind of um, gain the notoriety with the agencies and things like that. But until we did, we still knew, based upon un eventually understanding our analytics, that we had something, that we were engaging our audience. And we were building a product and content that we knew was valuable to our audience and that they enjoyed on a daily basis. And no matter what, even though if we can't raise them enough capital in the very beginning, or we're not getting the advertising dollars that we, you know, and the brand deals that we wanted, we knew at the end of the day that didn't matter because as long as we focused on our product, as long as we focused on our content, as long as we focused on the value that we're bringing to our users and that they enjoyed that on a daily basis, we knew that it was only a matter of time before, before, the, you know, before the outside world would, would, would catch up. And to young entrepreneurs who are having those same struggles, what advice would you give where do you strike the balance between persisting with the product for the amount of time that you believe it's going to take for people to recognize it or just giving up and trying something new? You know, I think if you focus on the product, you know, you focus on a great product and, um, you know, you, 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 you truly believe in it and you test the market, you prove out the concept even on a smaller scale, um, you know, and you study that, you study those metrics. I think if you, you know, it may take some time. You look at like Snapchat, you know, how big Snapchat is today, but it didn't happen overnight. Nothing happens overnight, it takes time. So you, you know, I, you know, I truly believe, you know, don't, if you believe in it, if your team believes in it, 
if you if you see that the product it, it, there is a marketplace for that product and people enjoy it and it's but it's going to take time to educate a market i mean we live in a generation where we're disrupting things constantly and you know that's what's so exciting about this the, the opportunities that we have today um as a generation you know technology is what has happened over the past hundred years um as a civilization and then you look at what's happened in the past 10 years you know as a civilization like with technology and how much we're disrupting things so quickly it's unbelievable so it's you know you have to i think believe you have to believe in yourself and understand though that it's going to take time for people to adapt if you have a but if you have a great product you know stick it out you know and maybe that means that you know any great product isn't going to be perfect from the beginning it's going to become something that you know i always say the process becomes the plan what you think your product may be and when you first start to what it may become, what we, when we started Elite Daily to what it became today is night and day. We went through many, many iterations and any great product is gonna continue to, is, is going to evolve. So you just have to be willing to, to continue to push the limits, continue to evolve and continue to educate your users and consumers.